don't have a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> I brought two boxes. That's <laughs> cool. What if I told you that inside this box might be the answer to one of your biggest questions, perhaps your deepest mysteries or a family secret? What if I told you that to open this box I don't want you to perform a secret ritual or swear a blood oath? No, a little spit will do. Saliva, your doctor will say. Because inside this box are a few other boxes from companies who do consumer DNA testing. Companies like Ancestry DNA, 23andMe, OmniGen, Dante Labs, there are so many. But for now, for this example, I will focus on 23andMe because it's such a fun name. And when I say a little bit of spit, saliva, that is what you need to send in. Actually, first and foremost, you create an online profile on their website because they sent you this box, this kit, with a barcode. So it's anonymous, but it's linked to your online profile, of course. So you put a little spit in the tube, and you mail it, not email, regular mail. <laughs> you send it to one of these companies. And there they have a wonderful technology called a genome sequencer. It would take too much time to explain how it works, but basically what they do with your little spit <laughs> is fire all kinds of light lasers at it, and then the way it reflects, they are able to decipher the information that is in your little specimen. They create a digital file. And I know that our software wizard Bob is thinking, wait a minute, <laughs> Mother Nature doesn't work with ones and zeros, right? No, that's true. Modern nature doesn't work with ones and zeros. It works with four letters. A, C, G, T. A, C, G, T. If you put those together a couple of billion times, A, C, G, T, in random order, you might have written your own sourceware, your firmware, your source code. Because I'm sure you know this, Biology 101, in every cell of your body, is this little USB stick with information about how your cells should grow. Imagine this, a little USB stick. When I signed up for 23andMe, I was able to download also my ACGT file. Indeed, it was a, a few gigabytes of ACGT. Well, in every cell of your body, there is this little USB stick to tell your cells how to grow, telling your organs how to grow, to grow, <laughs> that's a new word. <laughs> telling your organs how to grow, telling your body how to evolve over time. So this is important stuff. And it's my firm belief, this is why I'm giving this talk, that companies like 23andMe are actually going to be the Googles of the 21st century. Just think of it, in the 20, did I say 21st century? I hope so. Let's do this again for the edit. <laughs> it is my firm belief that companies like these companies are the Googles of the 21st century. Just think of it. Google built an entire empire in the 20th century on a database and a set of algorithms. The database was just a large text file. All the web addresses in the world and some metadata. Yeah, it's a text file. And algorithms like PageRank, so that if we search something, they can find the right results for us. Well, companies like 23andMe also are building a database. I am just one row in this database. There are millions of other people who have also uploaded their digital twin, a form of DNA sample, to this company. And 23andMe and these other companies are now coming up with algorithms to find patterns in their data. Basically, it's like Amazon. People who bought this also bought that. 
simple stuff, big effect. People with these genes, fill in the blanks. I get monthly emails that say, hey Jim, a new medical report came out that shows that people with a certain gene, by the way, the gene we know you, Jim, have, yes, you, that in their 40s, these people are more likely to suffer from. Click here to find out more. <laughs> well, and I know some of you are thinking, yeah, you know, I don't care about my future health. Uh, when I get sick, I'll know it. Yeah, sure. You can pretend for three seconds and then you click the link. <laughs> and then they take you online to a secure uh, surrounding because you have to prove that your gym, right, it's sensitive information. And then before they give you the information, they say, are you sure you want to know this? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> yes? Are you sure you are sure that you want to know this? <laughs> I'm not kidding, it's an American company. Don't sue us, we'll sue you, right? So, yes, I want to read. And then they give you the information. Now, I know how you're feeling right now. It's, it's, it's a bit disturbing, uh, perhaps. Uh, it doesn't start out that way. It starts very playful. I still remember, as if it was yesterday, the first email I got from 23andMe. They said, Jim, we have received your sample, your, we've digitized parts of your DNA, we've looked at it, we've run a couple of algorithms, and we just want to check some things with you, if that's okay. Sure, come on. The first question that I got was, Jim, we've looked at your DNA, is it true that you can move your eyebrows independently from each other? <laughs> yeah, I had the same reaction. I said, Jesus, I paid a lot of money for this. <laughs> for this project, now they're asking me about my eyebrows, but I was sitting behind my computer going, wait a minute, <laughs> yes, I can do it, could you try it, can you move your eyebrows independently, people, if you're playing the home game, do so as well, yeah, oh, yeah. no, 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 it turns out it's very rare, <laughs> I thought everyone could do it, no, no, it's actually genetic, so, check, then they said, is it true, Jim, that your ring finger is longer than your index finger? And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> yes, it's also genetic. Well, I can give this talk for hours. They were checking all these things just to make sure that I was me. Because it was yes, 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 yes. So they were gaining my trust. They were validating their data. And the moment they did that, I sort of trusted them. It sounds silly to say, but I, okay, if you can predict my funny eyebrows, then perhaps you can tell me a lot more. So, curious nerd that I am, I also clicked on Ancestry. And they said, Jim, we've looked at your DNA and we think that 35% uh, of your ancestors came from, uh, from uh, Germany and France. And I was like, yeah, with the last name, like Stolze. <laughs> Way to go, 23 million, you pay a lot of money and then they tell you what you already know. Because I know these stories, right? In my family, my father's side, I have Dr. Stolze, yeah, that's German, and my mother's side is French, I know this. But I clicked on the other percentages, because 35% isn't a lot. And then I saw the sentence that sort of changed me, it said, we also know for sure that you have a great or great grandparent that is of Scandinavian descent. Wait a minute. No, no. Stolze and French, I'm not Scandinavian. I have never heard stories about a Swedish uncle <laughs> or a Danish aunt. These stories don't exist. So I was about to take, type a very angry letter to 23 me saying there's a bug in the software, but I thought, you know, perhaps I should call up my father. That's what I did. I said, hey, Dad, what's up with all the Scandinavian genes? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, how the hell did you find out? <laughs> oh, I used Google. <laughs> so I explained to him, and it turns out 
there is this big family secret in the Stolze family. It turns out that my father's father, my oh my yo, <laughs> my grandfather, isn't my father's father. And my father all, had only known for a few years. He was just finding out that he had other brothers and sisters. He was getting to know them. And he was waiting for the right moment to tell his only son. But I beat him to it <laughs> because I'm such a big nerd that loves data. <laughs> so from that moment on, as I said, I'm a nerd. I want to know. So I clicked all those links. I tried all the, the stuff that they said. They said I was a light sleeper, that I wasn't, I probably wasn't getting my deep sleep, so I bought this insanely expensive ring that monitors my sleep, and indeed, I don't get much deep sleep, and I, I went on all these websites, you know, genealogy, and I found out all about my grandfathers, and I have embraced my inner Viking. For the haters online, this is not a hipster beard, this is a Viking beard, thank you very much. And it turns out that one out of ten customers of these services has a similar experience. During Carnival, it's one out of eight. <laughs> no, no, this isn't true at all. But <laughs> one out of ten customers of Tentum has a similar uh, experience. There are actually, uh, I was in a webinar uh, last year with people from the Midwest of the United States. They were proud Americans, proud of their heritage, and they also took the test. And one of the guys went, God damn, I'm 40% Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> All right, congratulations, yeah. So, yeah, this stuff is interesting, it changes you. And I think that I might be now the odd one out, but my big prediction is that soon everyone will do this because the price is going down so fast as I said I paid way too much I paid thousands of dollars right now you can go to Dante Labs they sequence your entire genome for a couple of hundred euros 23andMe has these boxes at the local pharmacy for 40 or 50 dollars so the price is dropping very fast in, in, in the future it'd be like Wi-Fi it's there so let's use it and there will be some peer pressure. If you go to your doctor in a couple of years from now and you don't bring your little USB stick with you, with your DNA, I predict that your doctor will look funny and slightly disturbed and will say, you want to stop right in the dark? What's wrong with you? Right? Doctors are nerds too. They want data. So if you don't give it to them, they'll ask it. In fact, I predict that the price will be so low there will even be a negative price. Healthcare insurance companies will pay you to have your DNA digitized. So that is one prediction. That is inside this box. There will be even products on the market. Oh man, I love this. This was the DNA dinner. <laughs> I went to a restaurant that didn't have a menu and where you couldn't pay uh, for your entrance ticket. All you had to do was send in a little spin. Mm -hmm. They digitized the DNA, they ran their algorithms on it, and they predicted, <laughs> they predicted what I should eat, not what I like. And I liked it. So you'll see more and more of that happening in the future. Never drop your data on stage. <laughs> right. But that's this box. This is yesterday and a bit today. In this box is the future. I'm looking at my time assistant to ask if I still have time to talk about the future. Three minutes. Yes, <laughs> I do. So I'll keep it short. This is actually a whole new TED talk. And people are getting really excited right now because I'm talking <laughs> about the future. If we accept the DNA, is Mother Nature's information technology, then you know that you can read the data. In this box, I'm telling you that you can also 
write DNA. Rewrite DNA. And I'm sure some of you, a lot of TED heads present here, a lot of you know about this technology called CRISPR-Cas9. There are a lot of TED talks about them. I recommend you watch them, all of them. That saves me a lot of time. Basically, what CRISPR-Cas9 does is give you a tool to cut certain genes from a genome and insert others. Sounds spooky? It is. These are like molecular scissors. But my point is that it isn't just the academic professor that use them. You can buy your own CRISPR kit online. This is what I did. I'm a big nerd that loves data. So I have a CRISPR-Cas9 kit to actually use, for example, yeast, baker's yeast, insert some other genes, for example, from jellyfish that glow in the dark, and that you can grow a plant that glows in the dark. I call it natural light. That isn't too hard. The other month I was invited to a anonymous Dutch company <laughs> <laughs> to talk about their yeast. As you know, that is the main ingredient of the earth. During this talk, I used my CRISPR-Cas9 talk, a kit, to actually insert this genetic information from the jellyfish. Use yeast to actually create beer that glows in the dark. <laughs> no, it's not this can. You can really <laughs> think of, is he going to pour it? Is he going to pour it? No, I'm going to drink it after this talk. Uh, ladies and <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, um, welcome to my life. I appreciate you for listening, being patient with me. This box is about growing beards. This is about glowing beers. Um, <laughs> the moment this talk is uploaded uh, to YouTube, I'll publish a website called HowIBecameAViking.com and I, I, I invite you to go to this website and get some practical tips from me about how to digitize your DNA. Perhaps we are related, that would be fun. And you can also find tips how to grow your own glowing beer. Thank you very much.